Minister, welcome to In Conversation. Thank you very much, uh, Lynn, for inviting me and for having me in your program. Minister, Bali has been devastated by the pandemic. 100,000 or more Indonesians have lost their lives to COVID. So what made you think this was a good time to open up? The uh, number of new COVID cases, active COVID cases, and the number of uh, deaths uh, that we are seeing now uh, in comparisons to uh, the previous data sets that we've been working on signals that uh, we're now handling the pandemic uh, much better with the recent vaccinations of Bali that is nearing 100% of the target, uh, as well as uh, the health protocol being implemented, the bed occupancy rate is well under 10%. I think uh, we will take baby steps, incremental steps uh, going forward because we just took uh, the presidency of G20 uh, and Bali will be the host of uh, G20. Uh, so that's why we have to be very, very uh, absolutely sure that the opening up of Bali would be done in a much safe and secure basis. But we still have a five-day quarantine, even for vaccinated travelers. Isn't that going to put off a lot of international visitors? Yes, definitely. The quarantine uh, has been one of the uh, requirements that the panel of experts have uh, given their advice on, because the uh, average uh, incubation period of 3.7 to 3.8 days, and then we are seeing the new variant of uh, concern or variant of interest or variant under investigations that's still evolving. We are still in the middle of the pandemic. We have uh, medicines coming up, uh, we have vaccines, but uh, we need to be safe and we need to prioritize uh, the safety of our people. And we need to also put the health concern ahead. And that's why the quarantine is still required. And this will be continue uh, to be monitored and evaluated on a weekly basis. So you don't have a kind of a deadline when you say, well, this is when the quarantine will be lifted or we're, we're heading towards that. Well, this is definitely would be the focus of the small group that uh, the president have uh, given the task of, of uh, weekly review of the case and um, all decisions in relations to the requirements for uh, traveling in and out Indonesia will be done on the scientific and medical data. So uh, we definitely want to make sure that Bali and other destinations in Indonesia will have to be uh, strictly under a health protocol. And we have now a number of cases, uh, uh, sometimes under 600. Uh, and this is uh, on a daily basis is uh, a good outcome so far, but we cannot be complacent. We cannot really you know, open up uh, too fast, uh, relaxing too much, and it, it may be the, um, the trigger of the next uh, wave to come. So we need to mitigate that and we need to be absolutely very disciplined in implementing what the experts have given us. But if you still have the quarantines and there are almost no international flights coming into places like Bali, then to say that it's opening up, isn't that more for show, Minister? Because it's not really opening up. We are opening up and we have re uh, received inquiries uh, as well as we have uh, received uh, chartered flights uh, demand from the 19 countries that have uh, received clearance uh, for direct flights into Bali. So we're working on that. Uh, scheduled flights uh, would be uh, follow up soon and we're working with our partners how we could uh, work uh, in terms of the insurance required, the quarantine. There is a, a lot of demand for the uh, live on boat uh, quarantine, meaning that they arrive in Bali and they go straight to the boat 
for five days, uh, they would uh, be allowed to go into the dive sites uh, and enjoy uh, the uh, open seas, but uh, within uh, the premise of the boat. So the villas also received a lot of inquiries that uh, uh, people could go straight to the villas uh, and uh, be quarantined within the premise of the villas, uh, not inside the rooms. And uh, it looks uh, promising. So we're taking baby steps, uh, Lynn, and we, we want to make sure that these incremental steps uh, uh, give us more data to uh, analyze and, and take the next policies ahead. Is the healthcare system in Bali ready for a possible surge of foreign visitors? Because even so, some of them might get ill. Right. And this is something that we want to make sure that it is being prepared uh, for uh, circumstances uh, and scenarios that we are uh, probably be uh, going to see uh, starting early part of next year when uh, visitors would start coming into Bali and other destinations. We need to make sure the health facilities will be ready. And the second wave uh, in Bali and other parts of Indonesia happening in July and August really taught us a big lesson that uh, we would need to prepare these health facilities uh, and health uh, supplies uh, very, very, uh, we need to have the inventory uh, at the level that would be uh, comfortable uh, to handle uh, all scenarios. And with a bad occupancy rate uh, that uh, Bali and other parts of Indonesia now have, we are confident that we would be able to handle if should, should there be uh, another search, uh, and we will do this. Uh, I would say uh, we need to quickly be flexible in terms of adjusting our policies when we see another search. President Joko Widodo has also said that he thinks an ASEAN travel bubble should be implemented immediately, or I take it to mean that as soon as possible. What do you think? I think it's a good um, propositions by our president. Uh, he's now the leader of G20. We want to make sure that regionally Indonesia uh, take this leadership positions in terms of uh, connectivity among ASEAN member countries. And this is also uh, in time for us to take the chairmanship of ASEAN next uh, term in 2023. I will be traveling uh, to uh, Sihanouk Field in uh, January to take over chairmanship of the ASEAN Tourism uh, Working Group. And this is uh, something that we believe we need to work harder to ensure that we synergize and we synchronize and we harmonize all the policies so that we could have the travel bubble within uh, the ASEAN countries. And this is something that I would put in the top priority of our discussions with the uh, tourism ministers across ASEAN in general. But is it realistic, Minister, given that for many ASEAN countries, up to 70% of the population is still unvaccinated. So we're seeing quite big disparities from country to country as well about the pace of vaccinations. This would allow countries to uh, prioritize vaccinations. This would allow suppliers of vaccines uh, ramp up uh, the shipments. And starting next year, Indonesia's uh, uh, 
is uh, going to implement the booster package uh, for targeted groups, uh, in particular in the first quarter of next year, because um, some of the efficacy of the earlier vaccines um, needs to be complemented with a booster package. And uh, I, I think uh, we are taking leadership here. We hope that other ASEAN countries uh, would be able to also ramp up the vaccinations. Our target is uh, uh, well in uh, higher than 2.3 million of uh, vaccine jabs a day. It's a tall order, but uh, I think we're achieving uh, those targets set by our president. Uh, and this is something that uh, hopefully would inspire the rest of the ASEAN member countries to, to also ramp up the vaccinations uh, for their populations. Well, if I can sort of read between the lines of some of the things you're saying, uh, Minister, does that mean that you actually think meetings might be able to take place over the next few months, but for ordinary tourism, in other words, for us who just are normal, ordinary people, that won't happen until next year when booster jabs have come out, uh, when we're much more advanced about knowing you know, how bad the various waves are? Well, for essential travelers to, uh, coming in and out of Indonesia has always been facilitated uh, with health protocols uh, and uh, with the quarantine protocols. For the uh, uh, tourists, uh, in particular tourists within the 19 countries, uh, it is now open. You can travel in and out of Indonesia with uh, the protocols. And uh, for uh, the tourists within the member ASEAN countries, I think it has to be uh, evaluated within on a weekly basis that we are doing here in Indonesia. And we certainly would want to be very, very uh, transparent in terms of uh, communicating that we are confident that if we continue to be able to handle this pandemic, uh, we would see uh, a much uh, better improvement in terms of uh, arrival. But for 2022, our own numbers here, I would like to share you, Lynn, that uh, typically Indonesia before the pandemic uh, welcome around 16 to 17 million uh, visitors a year for, from uh, foreign arrivals. Uh, next year, uh, we're actually targeting somewhere around 2 million. So this is uh, the concept of personalized, customized, localized and smaller, much, much smaller in size tourism. And uh, it's just how we're going to handle the situations during the pandemic. And hopefully we would be able to transition to uh, a much better situations, uh, transitions to uh, the normal uh, post pandemic, they call it endemic. Uh, we, we believe uh, we are now uh, putting a test case in Blitar, a city in East Java, whereby we're transitioning for level one. Uh, and then now Indonesia is already also level one uh, under the WHO classifications. So we are trans transitioning. Uh, and we believe that uh, this would allow us to work together with countries within ASEAN and outside ASEAN uh, to, to be able to have uh, more visitors going forward. Gone will be the days when you have masses of backpackers coming into Indonesia, but instead you want these rather posh, wealthy persons um, who will spend much more for the days that they're in Indonesia. Is that the shift? That's not the uh, uh, 
the right uh, or the correct uh, depiction. It is, yes, a quality and sustainability tourism. We want to improve the number of days uh, that they are spending in Indonesia, length of stay. We want to make sure uh, not only a much better quality spending, but also the impact to environment. Uh, the uh, uh, 17 million numbers plus put a, a heavy tax on uh, our environment. And we are moving into quality and sustainability type of tourism. And this 2 million is a start, but we are going to grow this uh, uh, responsibly and making sure that uh, Labuan Bajo, Bali, and other destinations will be able to implement a clean, healthy, safe, and environmental sustainability uh, destinations and creative economy centers. Uh, and gradually, uh, up to the end of the uh, this administrations in 2024, uh, we're targeting to reach uh, closer to eight to 10 million uh, tourists. But it will take some time, Lynn, before people will travel as freely as pre-pandemic. And we understand this. So quality tourists rather than quantity tourists. That's correct. What about China, though? China has so many tourists coming out here to Southeast Asia, and they were a big grouping in Indonesia as well. So even if Indonesia opens up, isn't it a problem that China is not opening up? Their citizens can't freely travel everywhere. Well, we uh, obviously are anticipating that China will probably take some time before the uh, arrival of tourists uh, coming into centers such as Manado, Bali, but we are seeing now that uh, the uh, quality of the tourism in, in particular in some of the five super priority destinations, we want to uh, market it to a specific targeted and segmented uh, group uh, within China that uh, would love ecotourism, for instance. Uh, they would probably uh, focusing on uh, not just taking selfies, but taking experience in tourism village, living uh, a life with the local inhabitants of the, uh, the village itself, buying local products, buying creative economy products, uh, seeing nature and culture as the uh, best part of uh, Indonesia has to offer. And this type of uh, targeted and segmented uh, Chinese tourists, which is huge, very big, uh, would be uh, a new opportunities for us to, uh, to focus on uh, starting next year. But Minister, should you be trying to attract Indonesians to travel within Indonesia rather than chasing visitors from far away? Well, there is always a saying that uh, a bird in the hand is not much better than 10 birds in the trees. Uh, and that's what we've been doing because we have uh, a big market and close to 280 million uh, domestic tourists uh, in a year. And it drops 30% in 2020, but we are now growing up and it's uh, uh, much easier to ramp up. Sports tourism is big. Uh, I just participated in a uh, bike and run uh, festival in uh, Ambon and in Malukos. Uh, dive sites such as Raja Ampat uh, is now have to uh, pivot uh, in terms of uh, catering into domestic tourists. And this is something that uh, the industry must be able uh, to increase their agility uh, to work together. And, and these are uh, some of the uh, rising middle class uh, in Indonesia is also high spending uh, group of people and they are well connected uh, within the technology. So they're using platform to, to travel. They like to stay in homestay instead of hotels. They like to experience uh, smaller groups of trekking uh, and combine uh, triathlon 
as well as uh, kayaking, uh, river tubing is really big uh, among the domestic tourists. So this is something that uh, uh, in the past we have not been focusing on, but uh, the pandemic forced us to innovate, to adapt and to collaborate. Final question, Minister. What would you say to a, let's say, Singapore tourist who very much wants to come to Bali, but is a little bit apprehensive, apprehensive about the quarantine, apprehensive about second, third, fourth ways? What would you say to them? We will focus on your health. We will focus on your uh, experience and memories. And uh, it would be uh, fantastic and memorable, and especially uh, the weddings. Uh, Singapore, Singaporeans likes to do wedding in destinations. So uh, do your wedding here. Uh, we'll cater. Uh, we'll, you come here as a, a couple, uh, but you go home as family. So please uh, visit Indonesia. Uh, visit responsibly and uh, of course uh, we'll uh, do our uh, utmost best uh, to serve you uh, for your greatest experience. Minister, thank you very much for being on In Conversation. Thank you very much.